Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. So, guys, um, we are recording off of the iPad. I just really wanted to do it outside, so there's no external microphone. We're just using the microphone in the iPad. Hopefully, you guys can all hear us. I know some might have issues um, hearing, but we're doing our best to speak directly into the microphone. Definitely. We're doing our very, very best to want to get this information out there. So if there are sound issues, please, please excuse them. Yes. So, you know, a question that popped up on EE Arts um, was, again, you know, why would we choose to incarnate into this time when so many people around the globe are suffering in what appears to be so needlessly? with a power structure uh, that is becoming more and more obvious it, that it doesn't care about humanity. It, it doesn't care about the planet. It doesn't seem to care about anything but itself and its own power. Mm -mm. No, and, and it is a valid question. It's a fair question. And it's something that people should be asking, you know, why, 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 why? And, you know, Mike did, he left a, an answer on that question and i think he answered it beautifully well thank you but i think also it's it's good to elaborate so i mean i see so many questions so many comments out there um that you require really you know 100 words or more to to really give you a full full uh, fuller picture uh they really require in-depth explanations and my first thing I would say about like why again would we choose to incarnate in a time and place like this is that it really you got to look at it first from the bigger perspective and you know to to answer that question first and foremost you have to say uh, ask another question and say you know well well who really are we what are we that's the bigger perspective you know get perspective on who is asking that question and so you know the answer might be well again you know my name is is jane smith and you know um whatever i'm a pharmacist and i work over at cvs and you know what do you mean you know who is asking that question because you know again uh jane smith that works at cvs as a pharmacist is just one persona of the real you the real you is on a bigger plane of existence and is having experiences from different perspectives this this is part of what we can't really know fully when we're in the body unless we can achieve that which is called self-realization in the sanatana dharma which is understanding again the bigger perspective of who we are so when you look at it from the perspective of, you know, again, John Doe, fireman, okay, it might not make sense. And you might be like, why would I come and incarnate at this place in this time with all the crazy chaos going on and needless suffering? But when you realize that the higher you has had a series of incarnations in which it has learned many different lessons and is still desiring to learn others. Well, we came down here for expansion. And in order to create expansion, we have to create situations for ourselves that are going to bring about that expansion. And many times uh, people do not do anything unless the universe uh, touches them in a certain way and makes them uncomfortable so that they do move. Uh, many people will stay in the situation that they're in because they're comfortable, but higher self has, has a different idea and you've made these plans to come down here and do these things. And, and the, the truth of it is if you knew, <laughs> if you knew what the plans were, your 3d self or your little self might say, absolutely not. I am not doing this. No way. No how. So there is a deliberate blinding or a deliberate shielding of information so that we will do these things, walk through these hardships, bring about expansion because that's almost like expansion is almost like a, it's an automatic, um, 
It's an automatic reflex. It's a reflex. It's just what we do. So there's really no directions on how to do it. It's just our soul and our spirit needs expansion because that's the very, very deepest core of our being. And honestly, darkness and pain, that's our greatest teacher. That's the thing that propels us. That's the thing that pushes us to make changes as needed. As above, so below. As within, so without. When you look to a, a tree, you know, we have pecan trees here. And, you know, these trees have not had a, the needed uh, attention uh, that they really truly need and deserve over the last 20 years. But these are very big established trees and they're still giving off pecans, although they're the, pe empty. <laughs> the pecan shells are empty. They're still laying their shells. They're still giving off their seeds, even though these seeds are empty at this point in time. Uh, and so source is always, always, always giving off more seeds. Those, those seeds, so to speak, are souls. And so souls are truly pieces of source, uh, emanations from source. Each one of us is one of those. And because, you know, they are a, a piece of source, which source, again, is those things that we attribute to God with the big G, uh, omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient, in other words, all, all powerful, all knowing, and all around us at all times, even though source has, you could view it as localized itself, as these individual units of consciousness, which are really one big unit of consciousness, as we are all but drops of water in an ocean of consciousness, ultimately, but each having a unique experience. And so, you know, some seasons past, these pecan trees have given off uh, different uh, pecans that were perhaps very, very uh, delicious, generous, and totally, totally fruitful. Mm -hmm. And right now it's going through a season where um, it's, it's not as fruitful and we are going to nurture them back to, to health and, and get them to be more fruitful again. So it is with, with individual uh, souls as well. You know, source is always giving off more individual, unique souls constantly. There are new souls being birthed constantly. And there are some that have been birthed in eons past, insurmountable, un un uncomprehensible periods of time to our uh, human minds. And again, we, we don't see the big perspective when we're in the human body. That's the big giveaway. And that's the way it's supposed to be. We're not supposed to know all the angles when we're in uh, the human body. It is part of this experience. It is a learning and growing experience. This is why we are here. And what we are in reality are, you could view it as creator gods in training because there was, a, there is a being that decided to create this reality, came up, conceptualized, and manifested with the help of other entities this particular reality, this construct that we find ourselves in. Now that being had to have gone through all the different trials and tribulations uh, that we, we are going through at this time period in order to understand. Again, you know, the only way you can understand something is from the perspective of the person that's going through the trials and tribulations. So this is why uh, many of us are, are choosing to go through this because this is going to be an exercise in compassion. This is going to be an exercise in patience. This is an exercise in tolerance. And it's also a, an exercise in when to not tolerate and when to come up with uh, new ways of doing things, when to think out of the box, how to think out of the box. Again, if all tests were so easy that everybody would always get a hundred. They wouldn't really be worth taking, would they? No, and, and understand, I think one of the valuable um, 
pieces of information we can keep inside of ourselves is be very mindful when, you know if you're if you're judging others because you really don't know what they have gone through you don't know what they are facing you don't know what they are dealing with and they don't know what you're dealing with so it's about standing back and letting one another walk through our walk through our um, our lives and figuring things out on our own but you know you don't really know certain things until you know and sometimes you might see someone doing something that might seem very disappointing to you or upsetting to you but you don't know the whole picture from their perspective and I think that's when we need to turn back into ourselves and say okay you know I need to stand here from my perspective and work on my kingdom because we are creator gods and everyone here has something that they are in charge of and this is your kingdom whether it be your bedroom whether it be your apartment whether it be your pup there's something you're in charge of and this is your kingdom and these are the things that should be focused on absolutely and you know it takes me back to bible studies i was going to as as a teenager and having these discussions with, um, you know, people that were my elders, sometimes three, four times my age. And, you know, again, getting them to, I think, think in a little bit bigger terms because so often people would just leave things as is and just not look deeper at all. And, you know, when you ask the question, well, well what really is is uh, the purpose here and you know i remember one saying well you know i never really thought of it but i guess we're all supposed to be co-creators in christ and when you think about it co-creators in christ is is exactly uh what we're kind of talking about if you're looking at the christened self as that self with the higher perspective the 5d and up perspective yeah, absolutely. We we are all trying to become co-creators uh, through the anointing of the Spirit, so to speak. And again, trying to use words that might be uh, comfortable for, mo- for those that are coming through uh, a traditionalist, uh, Abrahamic tradition perspective. This, this is <clears throat> part of the bigger understanding. You know, again, y- you might... Um, get the the traditional well we're here to serve god well how do you serve god so how do we serve source well by fully being ourselves ultimately because again at source is branching off and emanating it's truly emanating it's not really uh you you can't say that source is truly creating us it's more of an emanation you know we we are and in fact, sparks off of the eternal fire, which is source. We are we're all the, all the same. As hard as it might be to imagine, understand that all the emotions that you feel are all the emotions that source feels, with the exception of the perfect love. Source is perfect love. Source emanates perfect love. And and there is when when it comes to source and us going back and meeting with source, we experience everything source does but could you imagine with only pure love in your heart but that's why source allows us to emanate from it and come out here and experience all different kinds of emotions not just perfect love so if you could imagine you know all different kinds of love you know I, i've talked about this before and i can't stress it enough you know um m- messy love you know love of all different shapes and forms and sizes source wants us to experience this it's all out of love for you so everything that is going on around you in your life is out of pure the purest love for your ultimate expansion but it has to be your decision sometimes your decision uh, or a individual's decision to go the path of of love true love uh, which will be a abounding in compassion and understanding uh, it may take countless lifetimes to really actualize and realize on an individual basis Every one of us is unique, and that's the way it should be. It's the way it's supposed to be. 
some will take a longer path than others. And again, it, it's coming to the conclusions for ourselves. So yeah, sometimes uh, people will portray uh, different personas in different lives. Uh, it's, it's fascinating too uh, to go through and sometimes you can tell. Um, there's photos out, uh, of, out there on the internet that you could look up about, you know, is this person the uh, past incarnation of that person? Because there seems to be a, fam a similarity. And so ultimately we all come from the same source. And then we, we break off into uh, these archetypal groupings. And then we go down into uh, these different soul groupings. Uh, and again, we could hear people refer to as star families again. You know, we just branch off again, look to the roots of trees, or you could look to the branches of trees. And you could see all you got to do is just, you know, you could follow individual um, branches back to a bigger branch, back to a bigger branch, back to a bigger branch. Uh, eventually you come to the trunk. <laughs> And the trunk goes down into the ground. But each branch is completely unique. Each leaf is uh, an individual. And yet they're all part of that one whole. And again, we are in training. This is the training ground. This is where we really expand, learn, and grow. And the toughest lessons are often the most valuable lessons. Yes, I mean, the more difficult times in our lives, those are the things that we carry with us that bring us to the point of understanding and compassion. So when we are at the grocery store and somebody does get angry or yell or they lose their temper, it's like you'll have the compassion and understanding for them because you've been there. You've had those bad days. You've really been, you know, the, the world has shifted you in some way shape or form and just maybe you lost your marbles so you can look at that person without judgment but look at them with understanding and compassion and realize that we all go through it we're all here learning we are all here on training grounds we are all just walking each other home from school in such a literal sense and meeting between classes absolutely so again we are in training and and this is part of the training and again you know what test that everybody would pass with flying colors without even really pushing themselves is ever going to really teach us anything it, it is about pushing ourselves it is about testing ourselves you know what could be more intense than than trying yourself in some of the most challenging uh, positions that we, we will be finding ourselves in and, and we are finding ourselves now. Again, this is trial by fire in so many ways. Not every being might want to go on and create many different worlds for others to come and explore, but in reality, we're doing that already. Ye are gods. You are a universe unto yourself. Who is to say that the you know, bacteria in your, in your body are not visualizing themselves like us. <laughs> we, we, you know, we might look at them from one perspective and say, well, that's just a bacteria, you know, and, and meanwhile, that bacteria might think it's stuck in rush hour traffic trying to make its way home to, a, you know, the wife and the kids, et cetera, or the husband and the kids. You know, this is, again, a matter of perspective. And there are more things living in you than there are cells in your body. And yet each cell in your body is an individual unit of consciousness that's part of one greater whole. And we do have life after life, typically, m countless incarnations. And yet we go on. Our consciousness goes on. Yet each incarnation is completely unique. And so, you know, your incarnation right now is unique from the last incarnation that you had. And there are many co-beings that incarnate with us. And, you know, there, this is a big job. Each incarnation, you know, again, you could, you could liken it to, uh, liken it to a, maybe a basketball team, right? So at any one time, you only got five guys out on the court. But yet you have the bench, you know, which might be 12 deep. And then you have coaching staff and then you have supporting staff and you have trainers and you have, you know, everything on down the line 
uh, to people that make sure, you know, the fridges are stocked and the garbage gets taken out and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, it's the same thing with us in our incarnations because you have spirit guides, you have, you know, those beings you might call spirit guides, guardian angels that are watching and they're kind of coaching from the distance in a gentle way because it is your experience. And then you have all the elemental beings that are literally keeping your body going. You know, this is like that invisible uh, crew that is making sure, you know, the, the auditorium, the court, all the equipment is, is operational and running as well as, you know, the personal trainers, um, the PT, everything. You know, there's so much support going on in our incarnation. I think we would be overwhelmed to understand how much goes into each individual incarnation. And I, there, it's, it's almost impossible to realize, you know, where does one thing and, and, and another begin. So if we go back to the cells or the bacteria in our, in our body, you know, is that a beginning? Is that an end? Or is that just something that, you know, grows and expands and becomes part of us? So you can see how everything is pulled together, how it works together as one unit. And I, and I really want to strongly encourage everyone to talk with your guides, ancestors, your spiritual team that you cannot see in the 3D. Talk to them as if they were people in the 3D because they are listening like people would in 3D and they have a part to play. They do have to play by certain karmic rules, but if there is a way that they can help you, they're going to help you. But they, I do realize and recognize that they like to be recognized also as if a family member or a friend were standing right in front of you. So have those candid conversations because it really makes a difference on how you talk to them. Absolutely. So when we do our mantras to the devas, um, you know, again, these devas are, are beings that have just sim- simply emanated from source at a much earlier time frame than than we have typically. And so they've been here, they've done this, they've had countless incarnations, they've faced all different trials and tribulations themselves, and they understand. They completely understand where we are, and that's why they can uh, totally act with compassion and love and non-judgment because, you know, they're in the position that many of us are, are trying to, to strive to achieve, but not all, because again, each is unique. And so, you know, that is totally a personal decision and a, and a personal journey, but we are all still in training, even though we are creating realities right now as we speak for other entities that are, are living in a symbiotic relationship with us and in with in us ourselves within our energy body within our physical body and this is the big reveal when we get out of you know this uh darker portion of the bronze age and we start moving towards the golden age you know what what increases well it's the perspective that we are all part of one and we are to be in a symbiotic relationship with the one if we are to have true peace and to excel. But again, it's these times that lay the foundation work for a greater understanding. Indeed. And I I really hope that this information helps some people understand this world a little bit better because so many people are having so, so many struggles right now and they're not understanding the world around them, but they want to understand and things are happening and they don't know why, why does the, why do things have to be so bad and and horrible and just understand that there is a, a much, much bigger plan in place. Absolutely. Thank you guys for your support over on Patreon and also on Ko-Fi. Couldn't do it without you guys. Much love. God bless and namaste. Namaste.